there, I'm Ken, this is CRT, and welcome to this episode. In this episode, I am going to continue further testing my recently acquired and very first Commodore 64. Now, if you haven't seen the video yet where I actually turn this computer on, I'll put a link up there and one down there for you to check it out. As a matter of fact, you should probably pause this video and go watch that video right now. I can wait. All right, now that you've seen that video, uh, you'll know that I mentioned that I have no games for this computer. Everything I tried on it worked just fine, but there's a few things I haven't tested yet, like uh, the joystick ports and the SID chip and things like that. But I got thinking, you know what, I do have the Commodore data set, which in that video I typed in a program, saved it, and reloaded it. It worked fine. Why don't I just put a game on tape and then load it, and uh, then I can test out those other things. So, guess what I'm going to do today? That's right, I'm going to try and load a game from tape on this computer so that I can further test it out. So, here we are on my desktop. Now, the first hurdle that I encountered, and, well, probably the biggest hurdle, is that Commodore 64 cassette files are a .tap extension. That means that I can't just record it to tape and load it on the computer like I do with my TRS-80 games. If you're unfamiliar with the tape system on the TRS-80, I'll put a link in the video here and uh, you can check out a video I did about loading uh, files from the computer onto tapes and then loading them on real hardware on my TRS-80 systems. Anyways, so as you can see here I've got Keystone Capers and it's a .tap file. What I did is I found a file on the internet, a program on the internet called AudioTap. I'll put a link to this down in the description. But what this does is it converts the .tap files into a .wav file which can be played on the computer and then recorded onto a tape recorder and loaded on the Commodore 64. So, well, we will do that right now. So we start audio tap. Now we want to convert from the tap file to a wave file. And we'll do Keystone Capers. And we'll call that Keystone. And there we go, right there, we've got the WAV file. Okay, now we have to record this WAV file onto a cassette. And for that, I am using my Tandy CCR81 cassette player, which is a workhorse that works wonderfully with many of my retro computer systems. I highly recommend one of these if you can get your hands on it. Now, uh, so I've got the cassette player and I've got here a double-ended three and a half millimeter audio jack. Now the one end is plugged into the headphone jack on the computer. We'll plug the other end into the microphone on the tape deck. I have here my blank cassette. Now, this is an audio cassette, so you have to do the old-fashioned advancing it. And there we go. We're on to the actual tape to record it. So... I am going to play this through Audacity. And as you can see, it's pretty loud within Audacity. And one thing I did learn when I was uh, 
doing this with other computers is you should turn the gain down a little bit and it uh, doesn't distort the uh, volume at all in the uh, program. There we go. Down. Now we will start recording and play the file. And there we go. It is recorded onto the tape, which means I can now hook up my Commodore computer and let's see what happens. Okay, I had the C64 hooked up. I have the cassette. Into the drive. Now, let's see what happens. It would be nice if the uh, save light LED there also lit up when it was reading data. There we go. Keystone Capers was found. And uh, we're getting uh, something on the screen, so that's a plus. Means it's reading some data in. And there we go. Now I can try out one of my Atari joysticks on here. And start the game. There we go. And this is the Keystone Capers I know from the Atari 2600. So, that was a success. Okay, so I have tried recording a longer game on here, so let's try loading that and see what happens. I have recorded Ghosts and Goblins onto this cassette, and that will be an almost six minute load time. There we go, it has found Ghosts and Goblins. Now, I will not make you sit through this entire load time, so we'll join it at the end to see what happened. Oh, and we've got a plat splash screen going. So that is a good sign. And the screen has changed once again. So things are happening. And there we go. It looks like we've got some ghosts and goblins. Oop. Ah, okay. And Okay, you jump to... There we go. This is gonna... One button joystick is going to take some getting used to on this game. But it is working. This is a hard game. I'm actually pretty good at Ghosts and Goblins, but... Whoa. Well, that worked. I now have some games to play on my Commodore 64, and I am super excited about that. 
Now, I am no expert on the Commodore 64 because, as I said, this is my first Commodore 64, and in fact, my very first Commodore I ever owned was a VIC-20 that I got just a few months ago. So, if anything sounded off to you, I mean, it sounded fine to me, but if you know more than I do, which is just about everybody out there, and anything in the sound sounded off a little bit to you? Well, let me know in the comments below. And uh, one thing I did notice is that that data set, yeah, it needs a little bit of work. It sounds like I haven't done anything to it since I got it. I'm going to guess I better uh, <laughs> crack that thing open and change the belts and everything. But, you know, that's for another day. For now, I have games to play. I'm happy. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what you can do with the liking, the subscribing, and or the commenting below because anything and everything you do is always greatly appreciated. So I'm going to go play some Commodore 64 games and I will see you next time.